Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Nat, Head of Communications and Impact at the Girls Network, and I'm so delighted to be hosting this panel event this evening. So a huge welcome to our special guest, Leonie Harm. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us. And another huge welcome to our panelists, Malaika, Liv and Tamara, who are all mentees at the Girls Network. So this is a really unique series of workshops happening alongside the Aramco team series, which comprises four brand new events on the Ladies European Tour, also known as the LET, which are taking place in London, New York, Singapore and Jeddah, starting next month until November and again next year. Some of the biggest names in golf will be taking part, and for the first time in golf history, one amateur will combine with three tour professionals to complete each team, and their play will have a direct bearing on the result of the event. So we're so excited to bring together three top elite players from this tour with the Girls Network, where we work with teenage girls across the UK to inspire and empower them to achieve their goals and shape the world. So girls, I'm sure you're going to learn a lot from our amazing guests tonight. And I also know that myself and Leonie are excited to learn from you and to be stimulated by your excellent questions. So what we're going to do is I'm going to introduce the amazing Leonie, then I'll let her tell you her story in her own words. I've then got a couple of questions just to start us off, after which I'll hand over to our brilliant young panel, who I know have some more great questions to ask you, Leonie. So let's get started. Leonie Harm was born and raised in Germany and picked up an interest in golf from an early age. When she was 15, she was involved in a car accident where she had a 1% chance of survival, but she returned to the golf course just seven weeks later. Her bio says that what was to come could not have been predicted by any storyteller. By winning the 2014 National Women's Amateur title, she laid the foundation for an outstanding amateur career. She closed out her last year of junior competition by winning the German International Ladies Amateur Championship, the German International Girls Open, and again, the German National Amateur title. This qualified her to represent Team Europe at the 2015 Ping Junior Solheim. She started her college career at the University of Houston in January 2016. During her seven competitive semesters in NCAA sports, she set multiple program records and claimed four more individual tournament titles, all while obtaining a degree in biochemical and biophysical sciences. In the summer of 2018, she successfully reclaimed the German International Ladies Amateur title just two weeks prior to the biggest win of her amateur career, the Ladies British Open Amateur Championship. This exceptional win helped establish her among the top women's amateur golfers in the world with a world amateur golf ranking as high as fourth, which is the best ranking to be held by any German amateur golfer so far, male or female. She also got to test the waters of being a professional golfer through her major debut in the 2018 Rico Women's British Open and the 2019 US Women's Open. Further, she represented Team International at the 2019 Arnold Palmer Cup and Team Continent of Europe at the 2019 Valiano Trophy, which both ended in a dominating win by her side. The only 10 pro in January 2020. Wow, um, definitely feeling in the presence of greatness. I'm going to hand over to you, Leonie. And can you start just by telling us in your words how you got to where you are today? Well, thank you for that introduction. Um, yeah, I guess it's, I don't know, when you flip through it, like you don't really necessarily see it as widely as you just presented it, which I mean, I was, it's a fun moment for me to be like, yeah, well, that all did really happen. So yeah, thank you for that. Um, yeah, really, I mean, I started playing golf at a really early age. And then ever since, I just really liked the competitiveness of it, like to compete and to try and amongst the best of my age or my baby. And um, yeah, so for me, the only way always kind of was just forward. And um, yeah, obviously that car accident in 2015 didn't, uh, sorry, 2013 did not help when I was 15 years old, that's why I was. Um, but uh, funny enough, like I don't really have any actual memories of that 
particular accident. So for me, when I like woke up from the coma, I was just like, all right, I guess we just keep going again. Like, let's do this. And obviously I also got like super lucky with my first aid on the scene. And then like my medic, the medical professionals who took care of me. So that was plenty of guardian angels out there taking care of me for me to like be actually able to recover the way I did. And I don't have any like serious lasting damage other than that I can't really hear on my right ear, which I mean, in the greater scheme of things, that's not a big loss. It's fine. Um, so yeah. And then, well, I guess it did. I mean, it didn't, it's kind of like riding a bike. I want to say like, you don't just fully lose it by not doing it for a few weeks. So um, yeah, just kind of picked the golf course back up went back at it um was hungrier than ever really because i felt robbed of some time and like the 2013 season obviously wasn't great so um that just made me want more and made me want to work harder and um i still had the same goals so that was to play the junior solheim cup in 2015 in my home club um which i then happened to achieve that it's obviously always nice if you do um, accomplish your goals. Um, yeah, and then in college, it really was a balance because I didn't initially plan on turning professional. I didn't want to like, yeah, I mean, I always wanted to compete at a really high level, but I never saw myself actually being a professional athlete. Um, so I really focused on my degree a lot too. And I picked a fairly hard one. And um, so balancing that was an actual challenge, um, made me prioritize better. Um, so my college life was not like you know it from the movies, um, really not just a whole lot of studying, I promise, not much sleeping either. And um, it was a great time though. It like really shaped me as a person, um, but yeah, now then like, in the end, when I like did celebrate that big win at the British Am, got to compete in those major championships. Um, and then like my time in college came to a close and I was like, well, I'm not done yet. Like, I don't feel like golf should end yet. Like I enjoyed my degree and I really want to do something someday in the future with that degree. And I'm really glad that I have it, but so it's not like a waste of time or energy or anything. Um, but I'm just not ready to let go of what I worked for for all those years. And I just want to see how far I can take off. And here I am now competing on the LAT. Um, had a pretty decent start to uh, yeah this year so far. So I'm excited to keep going. Thank you so much. I was quite struck by what you said about almost being hungrier than ever. Um, when you know when you were able to to play again after a setback and I wonder one of my questions was just going to be where does motivation come from do you think especially at the darkest or hardest of times well it's like I was never really in lack of motivation because my my goals were kind of set long term so there was still a chance or like a or maybe not a super realistic chance, but a chance to reach them. And because it got less realistic, I knew I had to invest more time, invest more energy and invest, yeah, really more of my life into getting to those goals, which otherwise would have maybe been, yeah, I don't want to say easy. They were like, it's never easy to accomplish anything, but um, it wouldn't have been as challenging, but um but they do feel a whole lot better if it's been a real challenge to get there because like overcoming the struggle is what really makes it worth it, I think. Because whatever's like handed to you in life easily, it's like not really special in a sense. Like I don't, I don't want to downgrade anything, but you know what I'm kind of trying to say, I think. Definitely. And what has been your experience being a woman in such a male dominated environment? So I feel like golf is a really, really cool sport in the sense of that female golf is also attractive because really we do the same as the men. We just play shorter golf courses in a sense, like we get like a little bit of a head start, which makes it fairly equal. Like just two weeks ago, um, I played in the inaugural Scandinavian mix where we like competed with the European tour 
which was just super fun um, to see the guys play, but to actually like face them and be like, hey, Mike, I can do the same. Like I can shoot the same score as you can. Like, and the end, the men ended up winning because they got really windy on the weekends. And then that's kind of where the higher club head speed of the men comes into play. But whatever, like in the greater, greater scheme of things, it really is almost equally attractive between men and women because the playing field got somewhat equalized, which is really cool to see. Um, so it has, I'd say, probably an advantage over other female professional sports where it's like, I don't know, I mean, like soccer, for example, where, I mean, the field's this equal size, ball's the equal size, the same amount of players, and like they just have to grind harder because of their physical disadvantage they have biologically. Um, but yeah, uh, so it's really, really cool to just become the best you can be. What do you think are some of the main, if there are any, myths to bust about women and golf? Well, I think probably mostly golf in general, but like female golf kind of gets that, oh yeah, it's not like a real sport. Like it's kind of more like old ladies playing for fun, which I mean, you still can. Like I'm not downgrading that at all. If you want to just play golf for fun with a couple of friends, that's totally fine. But on like a competitive level, golf is really athletic. Like um, I played, I think three weeks ago, whatever it was at the US Open. And it, it's like, it's physically exhausting in a sense, but like just the mental exhaustion makes it such a draining sport. Um, and also how the elite players hit the ball is such a, like you got to really physically peak in the gym or wherever you go. Um, to really compete with the best so it is in fact and yeah a pretty 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 brutal sport thank you I wanted to ask you I mean I suppose you you touched on this in a in in a way um, and perhaps you wouldn't define it in this way but how important are plan b's to you so I personally know there's people saying if you invest into a plan b you take energy out of your plan a but what you also take out is pressure. And I'm personally, I feel like the freer you can pursue your dreams, the more likely it is. Like, because as soon as you have fear of failure, I think that's going to actually make it less likely for you to succeed. And having a plan B and set, that's actually like a real thing. Like you're okay. Like, I mean, obviously I want to succeed in golf, but if I don't, it's not the end of the world to me like I'm going to be okay um that makes me so much yeah just more relaxed in a sense of if, yeah playing free of fear I'd say um and really being able to peak perform because nothing is holding me back in a sense and but everybody operates differently some people need that pressure of being like hey this is your one shot at a happy life. Like you go out and get it because there's no other opportunity. And some people peak perform like that. And I guess maybe just knowing or having a feeling for what type of person you are in those situations is what you should go with, um, whether or not to establish a plan B for yourself. And that's very interesting. How would you define failure I suppose I know lots of people have different definitions of the word and if it's not something to be feared then how do we go about courting it I suppose so like obviously there's always the short-term failure as in like okay I really wanted to do well and I didn't so I guess that's some sort of failure which um having high expectations is necessarily a bad thing having expectations that you can't always meet is not a bad thing because that just means you think like you you're confident enough you're not scared of setting high goals right you don't want to just go for the bare minimum so you never disappoint yourself but um in like a like deeper meaning i'd say i consider failure to be something to the extent of when you like look back like few years from now you look back on a certain period of time in your life and you think like man I really could have done better with the opportunities I had that I consider an amount of failure that is not not like helpful 
like you just always want to use your opportunities to the best of your abilities and obviously be forgiving with yourself like making mistakes is not terrible like mistakes are human that's what separates us from computers right but I don't just like in and then overall thing you never want to have regrets I guess so it's almost about kind of yeah taking every opportunity that is presented to you which I think is the perfect way to hand over to our panel because they are all examples of of young people who saw an opportunity and took it even though I know it's possibly out of um, their comfort zone to be sitting here on a panel interviewing someone like you so once again thank you to our three panelists for being here and over to you I know you've got some questions prepared but you might have some new questions that have arisen as you listen to Leonie so I'm gonna start with you Tamara do you want to start us off with a question for Leonie please um, so one question I would like to know is how can girls at school help themselves and others to break down stigmas around girls playing sports, especially those sports that are like normally associated with boys? I think the biggest thing about this, honestly, is just making it like accepted in the sense of, I mean, I, I don't know, like back when I was in school, girls judged each other pretty harshly. I, I feel like we really set the bar for what is accepted and what is not accepted, right? Um, so just, I guess, like helping each other as a community being like, man, like I, I'm, I don't, like maybe for me personally, it's not sport, but I find it really, really cool that you go out and you, you do that sport because it's your passion and just trying to, grow in awareness of how everybody's different and how everybody's interests are so exciting. I mean, that's being different is literally the most special thing and um, own it, like literally go up and own it. And not everybody's always gonna support you. Not everybody's gonna think you, you're cool or whatever. And like from the deep bottom of my heart, it doesn't matter like what anyone else thinks in a sense. And like the more you wear it with confidence, the more except that it is going to be um so there's both both sides like the internal okay i'm just going to stand up for my own interests because that's what i love to do and the external just like tr trying as girls to to really lift each other up instead of trying to tear us down to feel better you know what i mean like it's just that's such a a weak feature we sometimes show in a sense just trying to gossip about someone else or whatever be like hey like you're so not cool because you do something or whatever just so they they feel accepted in what they do themselves but there's no right or wrong it's just a social society that just dictates that but it's all made up literally it's all made up there none of that is real in high school it feels so real but it really isn't like in life it's just whenever you fulfill your passion that's the right thing to do Thank you. I know that advice will help many young people like myself out there. Thank you, Leonia. And I just wonder if I can interject quickly before handing over to our next panelist. Where do you think that potentially competitiveness might come from, Leonie, in, in, in teenage girls? And I suppose if someone's watching this who isn't a teenage girl, who's perhaps a teacher or a parent or a young man, what can they do to help girls embrace their differences and their passions with freedom and confidence um well I'm obviously I'm no like I haven't studied it in a sense so my my opinion is not fully like educated um but just from a personal feeling I think women by society have over the past decades and probably centuries uh been more uh, like reduced to their yeah, superficial features in a sense of like, oh, is she pretty? Or like, I, I don't know, is she likable or whatever? And for men, it's always been more like, oh yeah, this guy, he's kind of not a great person, but he's so cool at soccer. Like, damn, he, I want to be his friend. Like, why is that? That's such a wild thing. Or like, whenever like a man is kind of like a bit cocky you're like oh yeah he's just super confident like that's such a great thing but whenever a girl is just confident we're like 
uh, tone it down a notch like you kind of like be humble be humble and at the end of the day it's up to all of us to change that stigma to be like hey we're girls and I don't agree that I just got to sit there and look pretty like I'm not a doll to play with like I'm actually exactly as much of a human being as any guy so um I mean there's such interesting characters out there such interesting personalities and the more different they are to societal standard the well the greater they really develop into just something that has potential to change that stigma and I really just hope everybody yeah I don't know just encourages those girls to to be who they really burn to be and yeah for a more tolerant future towards like women standing up for themselves thank you so much and absolutely what we're all about at the girls network so it's absolutely brilliant to have you as a guest um thank you Liv I'm gonna hand over to you for a question now so one question I've actually really wanted to know that I've actually written down I've had it written down for ages was do you have a motto or a phrase you would tell yourself to stay positive or to determine yourself to push forward? That is such a wonderful question. Man. Um, motto or phrase? Uh, I, I guess, I, I don't know if it's necessarily like a phrase, but just you. So everybody is at like a different ability level in a sense. I'm trying to just put this into context. Um, because we're all just out there like fighting our battles, right? And we're trying to do the best we can possibly do in this very moment. And not everybody has the same opportunities, not everybody has the same knowledge about the same things, right? Not everybody has the same skills. They've like, I guess, grown or practiced or possessed or whatever. But just like to, to put a puzzle together of everything that you have, and that's the best puzzle you can create. And it really doesn't matter if the puzzle is complete, it is your best puzzle. Um, and that's like what I'm always trying to tell myself, literally at anything I do, I'm like, all right, well, this is the point now that you have to submit your puzzle. And this is everything, like from all the things that I've, I got, like I've put it into this puzzle and here's my best puzzle and whatever the outcome is, if it's enough or not enough, I just know this was the best puzzle I submitted. Is that somewhere along the lines of what you were like trying yeah, to? Yeah, that's yeah. actually perfect, yeah. All right. That's, that's perfect, thanks. I think I'm hearing some I'm my best puzzle tote bags coming in our next merchandise order. Um, Malaika, can I hand over to you for a question now? Yes, hi Leone. Um, I really wanted to ask you, um, like if you were a teenager, what advice, if you could go back, what advice would you give yourself? The most important thing is to love yourself. And I've hated myself and I've not forgiven myself for the mistakes I've made for way too many years. And I've always beat myself down, thought I wasn't good enough or I would never be good enough or I wasn't meant to be great. Or I was just mad at myself for being different, for not fitting in ever for not being funny enough for not being athletic enough I was pretty obese and like overweight too which our society ju judges super harshly on girls and I've always defined myself of not fitting that that girl stigma that makes me a popular popular girl and that's so unnecessary like literally all the pain I really just caused myself like I could have just chosen to love myself I could have just sat there and be like listen well you're maybe not like this model in some magazine or whatever but like your values man like the way you treat people the way you care about things the way you absorb knowledge the way you're curious about stuff the how good you are at golf let it be anything that defines you like how your family is like anything those are values that actually matter to the core of like the human being you are. And those are what's lovable about someone. Like everything else is fleeting, like it's temporary, right? We all grow old, we all sooner or later gonna honestly become 
fairly less attractive usually i mean there are some people that age like fine wine but those are the really really like big exception but um just the fact that you want to create a character that you can be proud of being that you love that is the most important thing in life and i started way too late of like really accepting that or like being aware of it and that's really something I would want to change because at the end of the day, you are the only person who is with you your entire life. Like no other person. Like I always try to find the love of other people to make up for the love I didn't have for myself. But that is such a such a waste of energy because your own love for yourself is the only thing that's ever permanent. Everything else is temporary. And like, yes, the love of a parent is also super permanent but like for example which like I'm a, like my mom has passed like some years ago so it's like I mean even that love is now not in my life anymore like I have to love myself because of me just being there for me thank you so much that and so many people can like take on board your advice and it was like really good to hear thank you glad it helps Thank you so much for sharing that, Leonie. It is an incredibly powerful message and I think absolutely reinforces why you're sitting here as a role model to us today. Um, girls, by the way, don't, don't wait for me if you did have any follow-up questions or you want to um, unmute to ask Leonie anything at any point. Um, Tamar, I'm going to come back to you because I know you've got a few more questions you wanted to ask. Um, I was just wondering if when you were younger, if you had a sporting idol and if so, who and why? Um, so in golf, I always liked Roy McIlroy a lot, um, just because of how much fun he he had at playing the game, which just always seemed seemed so cool for me. And then also how he matured into being an athlete. So that was super cool for me as like a female role model, not that was like kind of outside of my sport. Um, I really liked Serena Williams, just watching her, how like powerful she really is. Like, I mean, everything about her attitude just is so striking and powerful, I think. And um, so she's not afraid of any, or like, at least it seems like she's not afraid of any challenge and she's overcome so much in her own battles like health problems whatever and I mean nobody literally nobody expected her to be as successful as she is but she knew she was capable of doing it so she just stepped up and did it and that's just something the world needs more of I think um women who just yeah are so so aware of what they can do and just just do it Agreed. Thank you. Um, Liv, I'm going to come back to you for a question. Another question I was thinking about asking was, um, if you've made mistakes any time in your career or even in your life, is how have you, how have you or how could you improve them? Um, you mean like wrong choices I made in the past? Yeah. Or like... Any mistakes on anything? Ooh, I've made a ton of mistakes in my life, man. <laughs> Ah, uh, it's honestly probably I've made more mistakes since I've got things right. But I think I think the most important thing is to always reflect on what you're doing. Um, self reflection has probably been my superpower, if I can put it like that. Just um, I mean, I was always my toughest critic, which, as I just said, didn't always work to my advantage. But um, in the end of being able to to actually detect those mistakes to be able to look in the mirror and be honest enough to say, hey, that wasn't the right way to do stuff. You got to come up next time with a better solution. Um, and I mean, any particular mistakes, I'm trying to think of something that's like super striking or like really, really big. Um, probably like super recently um at the, at the US Open like I before I started into the season which was in South Africa in the end of May I set myself some goals that I wanted to like process oriented goals that I wanted to embody for the season where it's like all right um for example like I don't want to have fear before any golf shot like literally just be committed and confident and it doesn't matter what the outcome is like just approach every shot with like really like a peaceful state because fear is really something that can like mess up a lot of things right 
and then and then like just kind of like wanted to like take myself away from the result of it but then like as soon as I got to the U.S. Open which was like just this massive stage like all eyes are on you I was like oh damn now I need a good result because people are not going to care if I approach this properly or not people want to see a result so I suddenly like I just fell back into my old patterns and I was more afraid of of hitting bad shots or like shots that would end up badly than I was like approaching it in a positive way approaching it in a confident way and just really like noticing as as soon as it happens is the only way to change it to actually like be like oh hey wait a minute minute, minute, minute. we're gonna go back we're gonna settle it's fine you're not gonna die here nothing to be afraid of it's all good it's all gonna work out eventually and it's honestly all you can do is just put your best in that you have at the time anyways there's like there's no point for fear and um, yeah, I guess that's probably the way to go about bad decisions or bad attitudes or approaches or whatever, just to to reflect them and then find some methods to help yourself. Thank you. It's great to um, have my questions answered because it, it will really help me like, in the future or soon or whenever I need it. Happy to help. Thanks, Liv. I'm going to come to you, Malaika, for another question, if you have one. Yeah, so building on that, I wanted to know, like, what, before a game, what is your, like, best concentration tips? And, like, how do you focus before or, like, during a game? That is such a wonderful question. If you got any strategies, hit me up. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Well, I, I'm, I'm sort of kidding, I guess. Um, it's, I always do always go through a warm up routine, which is more or less essentially the same. I do like to listen to music to kind of like calm myself down, get into the state where it's like, I always make the joke, it's the right balance between caffeine and adrenaline. You gotta find a mixture between enough coffee and enough excitement. <laughs> but uh, really, for me personally, I'm not one to like enter the zone of competition like in the beginning and then just like never zone out till the end I'm one like I can peak better if I actually have relaxation time in the middle so for me it is all about okay so let's call it 30 seconds before shot and 10 seconds after shot I'll be like 110 percent focused but then there's absolutely no focus on golf the entire time up to the next shot for me to be able to hold this really high level of concentration when it actually matters because in golf you have a lot of time in between shots right like you walk to your next shot you walk to the next hole you wait for your opponents to play and holding even like let's call it 90 percent of concentration during that time is a waste for me personally that's a waste of energy and i cannot maintain that so then i'll run out like my batteries will run out in the end and then maybe in the end I'll make some stupid mistakes just because I, I wanted to stay in the zone for too long. So that's really what, for me, it's been all about to find, yeah, find the ability to, to zone in and out. Thank you so much. That was like really helpful. Thank you. So Leonie, I'm going to ask you three really quick fire one word questions and once I've oh, done yeah. that I'm gonna I'm, no pressure I'm get well you just talked about your focus you know let's see it in action um and then I'm gonna hand over to I'm gonna hand the floor over to the girls for any other questions that um they've been wanting to ask you so for our quick fire Leonie do you like Marmite I have no clue what it is <laughs> I love that I love that answer let's leave that no clue what it is do you both look forward to summer or winter summer summer person and what's your favorite instagram account at the mercedes amg formula one patronus whatever instagram account because i'm a huge formula one fan and they just have a good balance between funny and serious like that a lot love it okay I'm gonna ask you one more what's your favorite city that you've ever been to Rome Ooh. great choice a lot of history a lot of history in that city 
Thank you. That was our quick fire. I might come back to it. I reserve the right to come back to it later. Um, <laughs> girls, the floor is now yours. Anyone feel free to unmute and ask the only any other questions that I know you've got. I had a question. I was curious to know why do golfers only wear one glove when they're playing uh, golf? The, the left hand is what holds most of the grip. Um, so like right-handed people that swing that part way have like a glove on the left hand, left handed on the right hand. Um, because so the right hand really just is there for like support, I guess, in a sense. And the left hand is where really the grip is at. And so if that hand was to be sweaty, you would lose grip of the, of the glove, club. Um, or like if it rained or whatever. Um, however, the right hand, there's not much contact point between the hand and the grip. So it doesn't, doesn't really matter. There is people out there that have like, I guess either really slippy hands or like are just super afraid of losing grip of the club. So they do wear both. Or like whenever it rains really, really heavy, you might use two rain gloves right and left, but it really is just for stabilization. So um, the like one is enough. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I was wondering if when you told people you were interested in golf, if anyone like ever disagreed with your choice in that sport and if they ever told you why. Oh, lots of people. I mean, in Germany, golf is really not popular at all. And people are like, oh man, that's like a sport for old guys. Like, why are you playing golf? But then I'd be like telling them that I play golf competitively. And they're like, no, but like I ask if you're competing in a sport, right? Like they, like golf has so many like bad, yeah, stigmas or whatever in, in certain countries. I feel like in Great Britain, it's probably better because golf is like kind of like a national sport, but yeah, and I, I actually, I mean, I got seriously bullied in high school for being a golfer, like, for real. Like, people are like, oh, look at the golfer. Like, she thinks she's an athlete, whatever, right? Um, and I think I just really liked to, I, I guess I just, just the, the sport just really appealed to me because of how, every situation is always different. Like you'll never have the same situation twice and you can never fu be fully prepared and there's never going to be perfection. Like you're never going to achieve perfection, being okay with that and just trying to get as close as you possibly could to that was a journey that I just wanted to be on. And um, I mean, there's obviously for myself also been plenty of doubt. Be like, all right, is this is really what you want to do with your life um, because you do, you do lose a lot. Like you lose a lot more than you win. Um, but yeah, I mean, once you get something that really sets your soul on fire, like never let that go. Never. Um, so just to follow up on that, how did you deal with all the comments in high school, et cetera? I mean, obviously it made me feel bad. Um, I, I mean, I was really, really sad about it because in, in high school, it's all about being popular, having a lot of friends and, like trying to be liked um and I really wasn't and I mean it wasn't just because of golf but it was just because of a, a multitude of factors where I felt I mean I, I obviously had some friends that were like loyal to me and it stuck with me to the end um and well I'm, I'm trying to, to find the right words to put this it's these these friendship this friendships that you do have in in high school school whatever that do actually like you because of the values that you have, the person that you are, the character you develop, like the things that make you excited. Those are the only friendships that matter in life. And those are much more important and much more long lasting than if, I don't know, the popular girl thinks that I'm popular too. You know what I mean? Nothing against the popular girl. I'm sure she has great values too. But that doesn't, in the end of the day, like, those aren't friendship connections that last a long time and they don't go to the core of what friendship should really be about. Like friends should embrace each other to become the truest version of themselves. And only the friends who pick you as your friend, even like when it doesn't seem like it's their best interest, you know, like a lot of people also just choose friendships because they're trying to, 
increase their own popularity. And that's like your own agenda or like their own agenda, right? And that's not, that's not a great basis for a healthy friendship, a friendship that actually makes your life better. And I think I'd rather have one real, real friend than like 20 friends that just hang out with me because that would make them look cool. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense? Did that only make sense yeah, in my head? <laughs> yeah, I completely agree with that. Like everyone thinks that the more is the better, but really it should be less is more. Quality over quantity, any any day, literally any day. Always quality first. Thank you. Um, should we have one more question, and then I'm going to ask each of you tomorrow live in Malika just to share a very brief reflection and I will do so as well on the last 40 minutes with Leonie but does anyone have one more burning question? Um, another question I was wondering was in your career was there any tips you were given that you could tell us that would help us in, in our life? Mm. Cool. I have to pick like one, man. Uh, probably that long-term goals are much more efficient or like much more um, helpful than like, it, it is easy to have goals that are like within a month or two months or whatever, but chasing those is not necessarily putting you on a path like those are nice little like intermittent like things like that you can set like on your path to get to a major goal but I think a real like great goal that's gonna set you up whatever it be for a good career has doesn't have to be but like is is better suited if it is like three to five years from now so that and then actually be a massive goal so that you are more or less forced if you really really want that and it's got to be something that you're really burning for accomplishing like really that is your number one priority in life to achieve that goal and then that puts you in the position where you're forced to develop yourself into the best version of yourself but you've got plenty of time to do it so it's not like any brutal change. It's like just continuous little changes that gets you in the right direction. And then once you do accomplish that goal, you're like, sit there and you're like, man, I'm such a different person from how I started. And I'm so proud of myself for being able to do it. And the slower and steadier you do it, the more, um, yeah, the, the longer the or like the, the more prominent the changes actually are and you're not just gonna oh yeah like now I actually come with my goals so I can fall back into my old patterns and be I, I don't know whatever you try back I don't know lazy or maybe or whatever um and that way it really becomes who you are that goal is really what you identify with as a person as a person um so I think that's really just a way to to look at your development yeah that, that's that's great explanation for me thanks you're welcome thank you so much Leonie you've shared so much wisdom with us today and it's been so inspiring to hear you speak and you've been so generous in the way that you've shared your experiences so that we can learn from them as well and thank you so much panelists as well for bringing your insightful questions and for listening intently and for learning before our eyes and and being so open with Leonie as well I'm going to share a very brief reflection and, and just ask you again just a few words to do the same I think Leonie for me what you said about um the love we have for ourselves and how just what a guarantee that is as we carry on in life and and we stand to lose people it's just such an important Thing and it's such a useful reminder and I think the fact that we are here listing your your amazing accolades achieved in a relatively short period of time and and you sit here telling us that you've made more mistakes than you have not 
it's it's so educational because it just makes you just want to go out there and go for it and try and try and try um so thank you so much for igniting that in us um who would like to go first and, and share just a brief reflection from the last 45 minutes panel i'm happy to go um i think what you said on how you dealt with bullies as a source and all the horrible comments on because you enjoyed golf and you were out of the social norm and um, I think that is really helpful especially for young girls who are going through similar things and just like telling them like telling them that everyone is different if, if, if stand out because that's who you are thank you Tamara Liv, did you want to go next? I think this whole like um, session where we've talked, I think everything you've said is it inspired me a great deal. But there's there's like things where about when you said that when you came out your coma, how you thought, well, let's just get on with life. You know, there's no stopping me just to get out there, and you're hungry just to get out back out there. It was really inspiring because it, it just shows it whatever you want to achieve you should just go and do it and it should be your choice and I think it's just great to hear that from someone else to make you think that's what you should do as well and with you with that about the goals and how you could set yourself a goal and if you accomplish that you shouldn't sit back on it you should carry on to achieve more and more every time go for it Malika thank you Liv for this session I've learned so much and I think that the thing I will remember is like the small changes and like not to be afraid of failure and like to just go for it and focus on what you need to focus on and yeah just go for take all the opportunities and not to be afraid to like be out there yeah definitely I think that was the, like the most important thing thank you so much everyone and thank you so much again Leonie Harm from everyone at the Girls Network and thank you again panel Thank you so much for having me. It was so much fun and you are literally all so amazing. And I know you're going to go out there and achieve anything you put your mind to because you're just some really strong girls and yeah, ready to do it. I, I can feel it. You got this. Thanks for having me.